Welcome back. So as you can see, we're back in this uh, little canvas that we've been working on. We have our journey that we've been creating. We have an assumptions grid, stakeholders and users. We have project goals. And what I like to do is I like to create a story map. As you can tell, as I was building out this journey map over here, I started thinking about all the different requirements that are happening along the way, all the different things we're asking users. And it's starting to look like a user story map. And you may be thinking, what is a user story map? What's a user story? Why does it need to be mapped? Well, this really helps with prioritization and figuring out releases. Now, as a designer, I feel like this is super helpful, even for myself, when I need to think about the types of things I need to actually design for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through how we can do this for ourselves. So I'm going to just steal this journey map. And we can start breaking that out of it. We can, I'm going to just copy it here. Okay. So what is a user story map? So user story mapping is how we consistently help, you know, either clients or our product team to release small incremental portions of value with the ability to release at any time and know when the product is viable. It is a product planning method that really helps the product owner and the team focus on end user business outcomes when planning what to build and when to build it. So these story maps complement a traditional flat backlog. So if we think about the type of work that we're trying to build here, it's broken into a bunch of different pieces. And those types of things live in the thing called the backlog. And a backlog is essentially just a long list of different types of features. If we're thinking about like a traditional spec. Now, by adding the context of the user's activities and tasks to help design releases that address immediate priorities through a regular cadence of enhancements. Flat backlogs really make it difficult to understand the different types of features and how these features relate to each other and how do they create value for the customer. So if I'm thinking about traditional specs, they don't really mention any of that. The user story map really helps us focus on the activity that needs to be completed first and adds just enough stories to allow the activity to happen in the first release, then follow up with enhancements in subsequent releases. So what is a story map and what is it made up of? Now, let's take a look at this. This is essentially a story map in a way, but if we want to think about it, a little bit more in depth. Story map has several different things. It has the persona and it has a backbone. So we're just going to copy this line and bring it up here. So this is the backbone and the backbone is made up of high level activities. The app will facilitate in order of priority. It's made up of two elements your main activities and tasks. Now, the main activity could be something like onboarding and a task could be something like, let's think about a task with an onboarding. Enter personal details. Okay. Now the activities, this is the highest portion of this backbone. These are usually thought of as like these large epics uh, that is usually like an agile term to house all the different features within like a category. But these represent an activity the user has in relation to this application. So like I said, onboarding. Tasks describe the events that need to happen in order for the user to complete this larger activity. You know, an example is like entering personal details. Let's throw that in there. Another one could be enter interests. Add products that I am interested in. Maybe there's an education portion. Education around 
onboarding process. So these are all the different types of tasks that need to be completed in order for somebody to complete this activity. So as you can see, we're starting to build that backbone. Now there may be more activities. Like I said, there may be another one that is like, what's an example of an activity? I want to be able to find a product. So that's a high level activity and some tasks could be search. I want to be able to see results. So you can start to see how we're building this kind of narrative in this backbone. Now, in the next video, we're going to be focusing on the bottom portion of a story map and what a user story is.